In the next seven minutes or so, we'll look back at a week that saw the government do so many U-turns they might as well put in a roundabout on Downing Street, Vladimir Putin flexes muscles with brutal attacks on Ukraine, NASA moving a celestial body, and tributes to Hollywood legend Angela Lansbury. This is the Standout 7 from the Smart 7. Don't forget to hit the follow button to get your daily updates at 7am. And you'll be Chancellor and Liz Truss will be Prime Minister this time next month. Absolutely, 100%. I'm not going anywhere. That was the now former Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, who will go down in history as the shortest serving Chancellor of the Exchequer, apart from the guy who died of a heart attack after 30 days in office. Kwasi's reign alongside Liz Truss has been utterly chaotic, driven by the mini-budget which this week saw the economy suffer another plunge in the value of the pound after the Bank of England ruled out extending its emergency help to prop up parts of the economy. The bank had been buying bonds to support pension funds, some of which had been at severe risk because of the unstable markets. Speaking at an event in Washington, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey said the measure was always only temporary. We will be out by the end of this week. We think the rebalancing must be done. And my message to the funds involved and all the firms involved in managing those funds You've got three days left now. You've got to get this done. And at a meeting of the government's select committee, Sanjay Raja, the UK economist for Deutsche Bank, said the UK was facing trade shock. And if you look at where the trade balance is, it's at a historic deficit. We haven't seen this kind of trade deficit since 1955, since national account records began. Despite the market turmoil, Liz Truss continued to insist she's not planning cuts to public spending. At Prime Minister's questions on Wednesday, she defended her policies, once again highlighting how the government's helping people with their bills. Well, Mr Speaker, what we have done is we have taken decisive action. We have taken decisive action to make sure that people are not facing energy bills of £6,000 for two years. But Labour leader Sakir Starmer responded, saying homeowners are worried sick as he accused Truss of ducking responsibility. When will she stop ducking responsibility? Responsibility, do the right thing and reverse her kamikaze budget, which is causing so much pain. Quasi left the IMF meeting early and hopped on an overnight flight back home just in time to get the sack. Liz Truss then addressed the nation just after 2 pm on Friday afternoon, having asked Quasi Kwarteng to step aside in a bid to calm markets. I met the former Chancellor earlier today. I was incredibly sorry to lose him. He is a great friend and he shares my vision to set this country on the path to growth. She announced that former Rishi supporter Jeremy Hunt will be the new Chancellor in a moment of joy for radio and podcast news readers everywhere and then did one final U-turn as she cancelled the corporation tax cut. I have therefore decided to keep the increase in corporation tax that was planned by the previous government. This will raise £18 billion per year. It will act as a down payment on our full medium-term fiscal plan. Will it be enough to save Liz? Grab the Smart 7 every morning at 7am to find out. Russian President Vladimir Putin was clearly annoyed by the attack on the Kerch Bridge, which links Crimea to Russia. An explosion last weekend damaged the road structure and caused a fire on the parallel train tracks, rendering the bridge almost inoperable. He and his new commander-in-chief, Sergei Sorovkin, made their irritation clear with a brutal wave of attacks across Ukraine on Monday morning. Several explosions rocked the Ukrainian capital Kiev and the cities of Lviv, Ternopil and Dnipro, leaving over a dozen people dead. It was the first time Kiev's been targeted in months and one of the strikes hit, as BBC reporter Hugo Bashega reported live. A major city in the south of the country, very close to the front lines, uh, was hit. Uh, more than a dozen... So... Putin confirmed those missile strikes were in retaliation for an attack on the bridge, which he called an act of terrorism. In case the attempts to carry out terrorist attacks on our territory continue, Russia's response will be harsh and will correspond in scale to the level of threats posed to the Russian Federation. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky was quick to appear on social media after the attacks, announcing that of over 100 Russian launches, Ukraine air defences shot down more than 50%. He also spoke to leaders including Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron and Liz Truss as he pleaded for more air defence support and rallied his countrymen. We are Ukrainians. We help each other. We believe in ourselves. We restore everything destroyed. There may be temporary power outages now, but there will never be an outage of our confidence, our confidence in victory.
In response, NATO pledged more air defences for Ukraine at a meeting of defence ministers and NATO Secretary Jen Stoltenberg was clear on NATO's position. We will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. We will step up our support and in particular we will provide more air defence systems to Ukraine. On Wednesday, the UN General Assembly voted 143 to 5 to reject Russia's annexation of Ukrainian territories. Joe Biden hailed the voters sending a clear message to Moscow. He also says he doesn't believe the Russian leader will use nuclear weapons. But speaking to CNN, he had a clear answer on what his response would be. It would be irresponsible me to talk about what we would or wouldn't do. Have you asked the Pentagon to, to game it out, though? I mean, just in case? The, the Pentagon didn't have to be asked. In Scotland, Nicola Sturgeons reaffirmed her pledge for Scottish independence during her speech on the final day of the SNP's party conference in Aberdeen. The leader of the SNP spoke and said that Scotland can make independence a success and even had a date for diaries. If the court decides in the way we hope it does, on 19th October next year, there will be an independence referendum. It comes after remarks in which she said she detests Tories, prompting a backlash from Conservatives across the country. But the First Ministers refused to back down. Will I apologise for saying uh, that I don't support and don't much like the policies of the Conservative Party? No, I won't. I've got a duty as First Minister to stand up against those policies. Thursday was another no-good day for Donald Trump. The Supreme Court rejected his appeal on the Mar-a-Lago classified goodie bag case and the January the 6th committee made him their focus in what may be their final hearing. They showed new evidence, including video footage of Nancy Pelosi phoning the acting Attorney General and several governors in an attempt to get the National Guard to intervene and stop the riot. There was also new detail from Secret Service emails and internal memos that showed the plan was to steal the election long before the election even took place. Finally, the committee's co-chair, Republican Liz Cheney, put forward a motion. That the committee direct the chairman to issue a subpoena for relevant documents and testimony under oath from Donald John Trump. The nine committee members then voted publicly on the summons, which Trump will presumably battle through the courts. Mr Chairman, the clerk will report the vote. Mr Chairman, on this vote, there are nine ayes and zero noes. Still to come on the standout seven, NASA to a Bruce Willis and tributes to a Hollywood legend. Right after this. Welcome back. Just two weeks ago, NASA attempted a real-life Armageddon. No, not the end-of-days fire and brimstone thing, rather doing a Bruce Willis and attempting to change the course of an asteroid. They picked the teeny asteroid Dimorphos, which orbits another asteroid 7 million miles away. Then they hit it with a DART, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Just handy. Basically, imagine a vending machine hitting Wembley Stadium. And finally, on Tuesday night, we got the results of that experiment. And the good news? It worked. Which gives hope that if needed, NASA might just be able to save the planet one day. Let's all just kind of take a moment to soak this in. We're all here this afternoon because for the first time ever, humanity has changed the orbit of a planetary body. John Cleese has announced he's joining GB News in a bid to fight cancel culture. The Monty Python star signed up to host a show on the right-wing news channel with hopes to talk about important information that gets censored. It comes after the 82-year-old complained about the BBC censoring him and not allowing a platform for him whilst talking on the BBC. The only thing is, I mean, the BBC have not come to me and said, would you like to have some one-hour shows? And if they did, I would say, not on your nilly, because I wouldn't get, uh, wouldn't get five minutes into the first show before I'd been cancelled or censored. Well, we've given you five minutes today, and I promise you haven't been censored yet. So, John Cleese, at that, I think we shall leave it. Can't wait for the exciting new material, John. 18 Emmy Awards, 5 Tony Awards, 6-time Golden Globe winner and honorary Oscar recipient Dame Angela Lansbury has died. She was 96 years old and passed away peacefully in her sleep at home in Los Angeles. She was probably best known as iconic detective and mystery writer J.B. Fletcher in Murder, She Wrote, but she also had a glittering Broadway career and famously starred as Mrs. Pot in Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Murder, She Wrote was one of the 80s biggest TV shows and was groundbreaking as a detective show with a female lead. Rest in peace, Angela. Nobody had ever done a series that uh, featured an older woman. 
We had a show where we broke all the rules. I thought to myself, oh, I hope to goodness that those stories are going to be okay. It just goes to show it doesn't pay to listen to idle gossip. This has been the Standout 7, the best of the week from the Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 a.m. with the Sunday 7. Have a great rest of your weekend. Written, produced, and published by Daft Dogs.